Good morning and welcome to our Women Wednesday session. I'm Brandi Stitt, the Program Director for the Women's Business Center in Kansas City. Today, we will be focusing on our Women's Leadership Initiative for 1KC for Women. Uh, we are excited to have our presenters uh, from our first session returning, Denise Mills and Robin Sternick. Uh, today's session is going to focus on motivating yourself and others. We will have a third session on December 2nd, which will be uh, called Grow Through What You Go Through. And that will also be presented by Denise and Robin. So we're very excited to have that. We are recording this webinar and we will be posting the recording on our YouTube channel. Um, our, first, our first session was also recorded and is on that YouTube channel as well. Uh, so you'll be able to see all three sessions uh, once we have completed this series. So um, definitely feel free to revisit that or share those videos with other people that you know that could benefit from this. So at the time, I'd like to head and to Denise with Leader Fuel Now and Robin Sternick with Sternick Capital Management. Thank you, Denise and Robin. Thank you, Brandy. Thanks for the introduction and thanks for having us. Um, you know, this topic of motivating yourself and others is very timely right now. And we are excited to share um, not only the content that we have today, but we also have a tool for those of you who are participating um, that we will post in the chat um, that you will be able to download. So um, I'm Denise Mills, and you can see my partner in crime here, Robin Sternick um, also. Uh, Robin and I co-facilitate the Emerging Leaders Program at the Central Exchange. So right now we are working with um, a little over 90 women uh, who are growing in their career, who are in uh, leadership roles within their organizations and aspire to um, even greater. And, and right now, as uh, we all know, we're all facing a pandemic, um, probably uh, that's not necessary to say, uh, but actually I think we're facing two pandemics. One is the disease itself, and the second is the dis-ease that people are going through. Um, the angst, the weight, the, um, you know, we're, we're just tired and exhausted with all that's happening. And so how do we keep ourselves motivated through this time? How do we take advantage of this time to grow in our careers? Um, but also how do we take care of ourselves in the process? So um, those are the things Robin and I are gonna be talking about today. Uh, we are big fans of an active chat box. So um, go to your chat box and uh, you'll see um, a, a place where you can type, make sure it says to all panelists and attendees so that everybody can see it. Um, but say good morning to us, say hello to us. We love seeing that. Feel free to post questions, thoughts all throughout our presentation. Uh, and uh, we wanna be able to help you in whatever way we can and make this as relevant um, as we can for you. So I'm gonna pull up my screen uh, so that we can share some slides with you. Um, as I mentioned, our topic today, motivating yourself and others. And um, I think about uh, kids uh, a lot uh, and think about like, how is it that they have so much energy um, and how can we potentially capitalize on the energy that they have and how can we learn from them? What can we learn from them? So um, I'm gonna start us off by asking you, what motivates you? Let's just jump right into it. So what motivates you? What um, gets you out of bed in the morning? What excites you? Where do you feel productive in your day? And again, go ahead and throw that in the chat so that we can learn from each other. And I'm going to take some of what you say and I'm gonna share my own motivations and um, put that into how do we design that or how do we integrate what motivates us into our careers? So what motivates you? Go ahead and type it in the chat if you have access to the chat. I'll, I'll give you a couple of my own while you're thinking. Um, something that motivates me, especially right now, and I had the gift of this last night, but I am really motivated with having quality time with friends right now having that just relaxing and, you know, safely social distancing. So everybody feels comfortable, 
but backyard, um, you know, two or three people having just a nice friendship conversation um, is, is just really, is motivating to me. I was so energized last night after I had that time with some really good friends. Um, yeah, and I see in the chat, yes, um, family, Judy, yes, family um, is very energizing. Making a difference, Robin, yeah. So so my second one um, in my short list is making a difference. That, that matters to me too. And programs like this energize me because I get excited with knowing that I, I feel, I have a belief that I can make a difference for all of you um, who are on this call. And I'll, I'll tell you my, another funny one that landed on my list. And, and I would encourage you to take some time to think about this because even the, the list is energizing and motivating. But, but one of the things that landed on my list that kind of made me laugh was um, cleaning out a drawer. <laughs> when I have that drawer that, you know, there's this pile or like, I have a drawer that is just bugging me because it's a mess and I clean it out. Um, that, that's very motivating to me. And I thought about that and I thought like, why is that? Why is that? Well, well, three key things. One is, is I like organization. I like things clean. I like things neat. I don't like a lot of crap on the countertops. Like I like, I like clean spaces. That's one thing. The second thing is um, I like being in control of something. So um, if, if nothing else, if things are chaotic in my life, cleaning out a drawer makes me feel like I'm in control of something, <laughs> if it's only a drawer. Um, and then the third thing about that is um, the autonomy, like knowing that I'm responsible for it and then checking it off the list. That autonomy makes me feel in control. So, so if we tie this to career, if I take those three things that I've just shared this morning, and I've got a, a whole long list, um, what I need in my career is I need to be around, and Victoria, you mentioned it too, I need to be around positive people, but, but not just people, I need relationships. So friendships in my career. Um, I need to be a part of something bigger than what I can do on my own. So I need to know that I make a difference. And then the third thing is I want some autonomy in it. So if I put all those things together already, I'm starting to design what's ideal in my career. So, so now let's just kind of break out, how do you motivate yourself? And then how do you motivate the people around you? So here's just something fun to think about. Um, okay, does this look familiar? If you've uh, been around kids, do you have kids that just cannot get themselves out of bed in the morning? And when they can't get themselves out of bed, is it just a fight, okay? We have a lot of people around here, around us right now that are feeling this way. Even if you don't have kids in your household, it, it's just hard to get ourselves out of bed in the morning. It's a fight. Uh, maybe you can relate to this a little bit more, right? It's just like, please don't make me today, okay? And, and again, the feeling this, this pandemic is, is making us feel like we don't have control. So how do we get control and how do we motiv motivate ourselves to get ourselves out of bed? And um, well, here's a way, which I thought this was pretty creative. Here's a way. I'm not sure I recommend this, um, but also notice this is a grown man. Okay, so apparently he had his own issue. I think that red button on his bed is an ejector button, I'm not sure. But anyway, this this doesn't work, like forcing ourselves out of bed. Quite frankly, this would just make me mad in the morning. So, so this, this doesn't work for me, okay? But let's go back to those kids, okay? If this is your normal with kids, and if you can relate to this, then why is it on Christmas morning, we don't have to shake kids out of bed. What is it about Christmas morning that gets kids out of bed? And, and even if you don't celebrate Christmas, if you celebrate other holidays, even birthdays, right? When we celebrate a special day, kids get out of bed first thing in the morning. So what is it about that? What is it about that? We can't keep them in bed on mornings like this. Well, what can we learn about this? Okay, let's go through it. Christmas is something to look forward to for kids. There's a positive expectancy. So they're excited about presents, right? Presents, let's be real about that. Okay, they're excited. It's an extraordinary day. So if Christmas was every day, at some point we would get fatigued by that. They wouldn't be able to keep that energy up. 
okay? So it's an extraordinary day and there's a buildup to it. So it's a future day. Um, and I, I don't know if you've noticed, but already I'm seeing Christmas lights up and not, and not just lights on houses. I can tolerate that. I'm seeing Christmas trees lit in people's homes, okay? So what those households are doing is they are already looking forward to a special event and it gives them something to look forward to. And of course it's rewarding. So, so all of these are a part, like the anticipation of Christmas is a part of what we need to build into our careers, our jobs, or our businesses, depending on which one you are. So what if work for you was something to look forward to, had that same positive expectancy of presence, was extraordinary, which means, which means every day, right? Every day we have to look forward to it. However, there, there are special days or something each day to look forward to that is not redundant, that is not the same old, same old, but it's truly something unique. And then at the end of the day, what if we felt rewarded? How do we work that into our work? Um, there's um, a lot of work done on what motivates us at work. So that's a little different than what if, what about our work? But I wanna give you three things that motivate us at work. Um, and it's already been mentioned in the chat, but here are those three things at the bottom of the screen. Meaningful work. So we can be motivated if we feel our work is meaningful. That, um, and meaningful is a, is a word that is interpreted in a lot of different ways by different people. What does meaningful mean to you? And um, I'm sure you've heard the story about the, the um, man um, who's on the sidewalk, he's a bricklayer and another man walks by and he says, so what are you doing, right? And, and some people might say, well, I'm laying bricks, okay? But this particular bricklayer said, I'm building a place of worship, which is meaningful. I'm not just laying bricks, I'm doing something that is bigger. So that's contributing to a greater cause. That's me building something. Yeah, I'm just a bricklayer. So every day my job looks the same. Every day I stack the bricks and every day I lay the mortar. And so for somebody walking by, they might say that's pretty mundane looking. But when I attach it to building a place of worship, building a cathedral, that's something greater than what I can do on my own. That's a greater cause. And then the third is acknowledged for my contribution. So in our work, and, and notice people around you, um, and even if they're not in your workplace, we can celebrate people for the contribution that they're making at work, even when we're not a coworker. We can share with them that they are making a difference when sometimes they can't see it, or sometimes our, our bosses aren't giving us the acknowledgement. And, and, and when I say acknowledgement, I don't mean big recognition like an award. Sometimes it's nice to just hear thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're contributing. I mean, sometimes it's just nice to hear that. So you might look at this and you say, well, none of this is in my work. Like right now my work doesn't feel this way. Well, if you don't take control of that, if, if not you, then who? And, and years ago, I had this wonderful mentor and, and probably, I don't, I don't remember the scenario, I remember the outcome, but I remember this mentor and, and the outcome, and I have to believe the scenario only because of how the outcome went. I was probably complaining or lamenting about, I just wasn't happy. Um, I just didn't feel good about the work that I was doing. And here's what he said to me. He said, Denise, there are 10 words that are seemingly insignificant when you put them all together matter. And here's what he said. He said the 10 words is, is, if it is to be, it is up to me. So Denise, if you aren't happy and if you want happiness, you can't depend on other people to give you happiness. You need to be in control and take control of your own happiness. And of course, you know, that's humbling. Like that's humbling. Um, I just want somebody to make me happy, like give me the happiness, right? But nobody, and Robin and I talk about this a lot, no one cares about your career more than you do. So while you might expect your boss, you know, I, and I, we, we hear these stories all the time, all the time. 
is, is a woman's like, well, you know, my, my boss isn't giving me projects or, um, you know, I'm, I'm not getting the kind of work I want, or I'm not getting the kind of support I want. Well, have you asked for it? Because as women, we're not good about asking. We're not good about that. So how can you create something to look forward to? And we have a, we have a tool for you. So don't panic yet. Don't panic. Uh, but how can you create something to look forward to that has positive expectancy? Which, What I mean by that is that sets you up for success. That is something to look forward to. Identify the extraordinary, which, which all I mean by that is identify and decide six months from now, nine months from now, you are going to get a promotion. You are going to advance in your career. And even if you're a business owner, that you are going to grow in your company. Okay. What does that mean? What does that mean? So identify what that is for you and then ask, make sure the people around you know what your aspiration is. So if you want that next big career, that next big role in your company, or you want that next big project, make sure your boss and or the friends around you know that that's an aspiration. So you might walk into your boss and say, I aspire to learn more about um, how uh, the, the financial acumen of our business, like how we make money. Could I sit in on meetings that help me get closer to the customer or closer to the strategy so that I can learn the big picture of what our focus is and how our company makes money? And I will grow to that so that when I'm making decisions, I'm in alignment with the decisions that are being made at the top. What meetings can I sit in on? If um, you're a business owner, same thing with a business owner. Um, around you, there are people that have relationships with your next big customer or client. Are you helping someone like me, for example, I'm a big connector. Are you helping me understand what your business does so that when in my world on a day-to-day -day basis, someone mentions a problem that you can solve that you are top of mind? Am I educated enough? And I can't get educated without you. So if you let me know who ideal is for you, I'm going to be a better connector and I'm going to be a better referrer for you for your business. So identify what an extraordinary client looks like and then share that with people around you so that they know how to refer to you. And then how do you get the reward you deserve? Well, probably the reward that you deserve is the excitement of making a difference, the excitement of changing a life, the excitement of serving your clients or serving your company in a way that is a that is a significant contribution that uniquely only you can do. Those are the ways to get reward, rewarded. But also if you need a thank you, then you might have to go into your boss and say, you know, I, I love what I do. And when I say go into, I know sometimes th these are emails and Zoom calls, right? Um, for now, for now. But sometimes we need to share with our, our bosses that we need more affirmation. I, it's, here's how I would say it. I love what I do, but sometimes it would be nice to hear. And so I, I just, every now and then, if you don't mind, I just need to hear at a girl. And when I don't get my own at a girls, I, I have a list of my own at a girls, things that I'm particularly proud of because when I need it, it's not always there. And what my at a girls are, are stories that I have made a difference. Um, sometimes there are emails that come much later that I remind myself that I have made a difference. So those are my atta girls. Um, I make a list of them. And sometimes when things get particularly hard, reminding myself of other times that things were particularly hard and how they turned out well or even extraordinary. Those are things that you can do for yourself, tools that you can use for yourself when sometimes we don't get the affirmation that we deserve. Okay, so now that all being said, here's the tool for you. Here's the tool for you. So this is, this is a relatively standard strategic planning framework. So you can see, usually a strategic plan has a vision, a mission, uh, key focus areas, and then goals and strategies 
on how to achieve that. Well, imagine if you took this same framework and you designed your future, designed um, where you want to go with your company, if you're a business owner, um, or design what that next big uh, role is in your career. So you would take this and, and the vision. So <clears throat> let me give you an example. The vision might be um, a promotion, okay? But the bold vision is something that in particular you get excited about. So the bold vision is, wouldn't it be cool if along with my promotion, I got a special project that really lit me up, that really aligned with what I felt good about, that really aligned with my strengths and aligned with what um, would make me feel like I have made a significant contribution to the organization or would have a meaningful difference in my own life. That would be my bold goal. Now, let me, let me give you an example from my own life. Um, many years ago, many, many years ago, I had a bold goal. I, I, I'm an Iowa farm girl. That for those of you who know me, you know that about me. Um, I'm an Iowa farm girl. We didn't travel much. So my bold vision for a time was, wouldn't it be cool if I designed a business that I could travel? So wouldn't that be cool? So, and, and at the time I was like, well, how, how's that gonna work, right? Um, and I really just didn't have a picture of it. And then, and then when I started getting opportunities that allowed me to travel to some really great cities, I made sure that when I traveled, I didn't just go in, do the work and fly out and only see a hotel room or a conference center. I made sure that when I got there, I had a layover of an evening or a half day the next morning and gave myself permission to enjoy the city rather than a quick in and quick out because I knew I would enjoy that. That was, that was what motivated me. So, so then I got a little bolder and I was like, oh my gosh, wouldn't it be cool if I could travel for work? And wouldn't it be cool if I could travel internationally for work? Wouldn't that be cool? And, and so I, I, I built my business around something to look forward to. And after some time, no, not the next day, not the next month, it took some time. It took some time for me to share that aspiration. It took me some time to build my confidence that I was ready to, to move into bigger projects and to deserve. I had to, I had to get in my own head that I deserved to work in a bigger environment, <clears throat> excuse me, deserve to maybe work in a place internationally because that, that seemed like a big deal. I, I had to manage all of that. So it took me a few months and, it, and I don't even remember the timing. It might've even taken more than a year before I got that big international opportunity, but I had time to get myself mentally and also from a skill set um, prepared to walk into that and feel like I could make a meaningful difference. So that's, that's just an example, but get bold about it. I, I journal a lot and my journal is very private. So I like writing down bold visions because I know it's just between me and that piece of paper or me and that journal. I, if you read my bold visions, I, I would be embarrassed by it because it's, it's something that motivates me and something that is the answer to wouldn't it be cool if but, but it's, it's just for me privately, for my own aspiration. Um, also my fear is if I told you and you laughed, I'd be, I'd be like, oh, oh, like, so, so we have to know who in our circle we can share our aspirations with. I, Robin and I are very good friends. I know that when I share my bold aspiration, she is going to encourage me. She's going to encourage me because she's that friend in my life. So, so you need to have that circle and that network as well. So, so here's just another iteration of this, same, um, of this same framework. So when you design this, um, what excites you the most and where can you feel you make a significant contribution? If you can't answer these questions, your framework might not be bold enough, might not be motivating enough. It has to be uh, and, and Robin and I talk about this a lot. It has to be outside of your comfort zone. Growth doesn't happen within your comfort zone. Growth is just comfortable. But if we stretch just two inches, not, not a mile, just two inches out of our comfort zone, we will grow and that will make us feel like we're making a significant contribution. So here's another iteration, okay? So I mentioned earlier, um, see this in the center part of the screen. Um, just move my screen around a little bit. So in the center part of the screen, my vision would be in the next 
six to nine months, I want to step into my next big role or step into my next big project as a business owner. Okay, so I need to design what that is. So what is that ideal? And I'm going to use um, a career role or career advancement as my example. So what is that ideal job description? And, and I know Robin has these stories too, but I can't even tell you how many women tell me, well, that role doesn't exist. And, and I'm like, so you're going to just settle for that? Or are you going to design it? Because if it is a role that will make a difference in the organization and you design it, you're, it's hard for your boss to say no to that because it makes sense. But don't just walk away because it's like, well, you know, that's giving somebody else control. Like that, that, that job that I want doesn't exist. Well, design it and then advocate for it. And over time, sure, not the next day, but over time, sadly, sometimes our bosses come back to us and they say this, I've got this idea about this big role. And you're like, yeah, that's the one I talked to you about three months ago, but they have forgotten. And now they think it's their idea. Okay, fine. As long as you get what you want and it's designed in how you feel you can make a difference. So what's that ideal job description? Create a list of your strengths and your interests. Identify how these can contribute to the organization's success. So your boss you, you want to make it easy for your boss to say yes to you or easy for your boss to consider it. And then share those aspirations, not only with your boss, maybe other leaders within the organization, but share it with your mentors. Get some feedback from mentors on how you can make it even better. And then think about your network, build your network. And I mentioned this earlier down here in the strategies, ask to sit in on a meeting that aligns with that next big career move so that you can see what it's like. You might sit in on a meeting and decide, ooh, this is what it is, I, I don't want this. Or it might excite you all the more to be even more specific in this job description, okay? And then um, build your network outside of your company. So identify and then meet industry, industry gurus. Like there's, for every, for every organization, for every company, there's an industry association. There's the association of realtors. There's the association of um, accountants. There's the association of lawyers. I mean, there's an association for everything, okay? And get involved in that association. You don't have to join the association. Get involved as a guest. Get involved as a future member and meet uh, um, gurus who are identified through that association and they too will help you build your network they will help you, um, they will maybe steer you toward programs that will help you build your credibility, that will help you build your knowledge in the industry. Um, they can only help you. They can only help you. And this is the third one. Develop some skills that you need, not for your current role, but for that next big role. So what, what are the skills that you need in the next big role that you have? that you don't have yet developed. Yesterday, I worked with a woman who, um, let, me, let me just tell you how the conversation went. I asked her what her aspiration was. And, and she kind of was like, you know, I haven't really thought about it. You know, I, I hope in the next two years, um, I can move up into, she was currently a manager and she wanted to move up into a director role. So just up one level. And, and I said, really in the next two roles? And, and I, she had already told me about what she did. And, and I said, you know, why are you waiting two years? What, wouldn't it be cool if you can move into that next big role in the next six to nine months? She was already doing the manager role for a couple of years. So why is she waiting four years to get a promotion into one step forward, one, one career level forward? And she, she just really hadn't thought about it. And I said, okay, we're gonna write a plan. We're going to write a plan for six months from now. You're going to be having a conversation with your boss, but, but not, that's not the first they're going to hear about it. You're going to go in sometime in the next few weeks and have a conversation with your boss and let them know that you aspire to it and identify skills that you don't, you don't currently have. And she did. One of the things that she said I'm not real comfortable with is I'm not real comfortable with um, understanding P&Ls. I have small P&Ls that I'm responsible for but I'm not responsible for more complex PLs. And I said, okay, let's identify a mentor who can sit with you 
that can um, explain a more complicated PL, their their own PL, how they can explain it to you. And you, by them explaining it with you, um, challenging you to see things on the PL, um, maybe using it like a case study, you can grow into it. And let's identify a peer group that are currently working. So see in this third box here, develop a peer group currently in the future role. So not a peer group with your current peers. She already has that. She needed a peer group of people outside of her organization that were working in that director-like role. The titles could have been different, but she needed to network with a group of, of women in this case. She wanted to be around women and, and learn from them about the skills that they needed for to be successful in their role, all of that. So the more that she could do that, um, the more that she could identify who those were, she began, th she could begin to think like they think. And I, I wholeheartedly believe this is gonna happen sooner than nine months for her, but there's a little bit of work that she needs to do now to set the stage, to be able to get tapped, um, to be able to design this role. Which by the way, um, in her particular organization, the person in that role currently was stepping out of that role and moving into a different role across the organization, it was about to be vacated. She didn't even share that with me until later in the conversation. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this, this is a perfect opportunity. When were you gonna tell me that? And again, my, my point of the story is she just hadn't really thought about it. And now I can tell you she is on fire. She just can't wait because all that I described earlier about Christmas morning, she had something to look forward to. There was a positive expectancy. She could, she had hope for the future. And now she looks forward to getting to work every day versus like, oh my gosh, I just, you know, two years from now is a really long time to feel like I'm rewarded in the current role that I'm being, that, that I'm currently working in. So hopefully that gives you a story. Um, Robin, I'm going to turn it to you because I know you have some other great examples as well. Thanks, Denise. Thanks for that. Just hearing you is motivating. So thanks, thanks for giving us that energy this morning. Hi, everyone. I'm Robin. As Denise said, we get to work together on a lot of great projects. Um, some of them are, are things we just make up in our head and we go find them and it works out. And that gives us the energy to come and talk to you about things like this. So one of the things Denise talked about was you know, getting that vision and getting out there and thinking about what that is. Well, that's a goal. And we set goals all the time. What's exciting is to think about turning some of those goals setting into goal getting. And that's what we're hoping that this kind of framework can help you do this kind of thinking, this kind of just, you know, every one of us needs a hype girl. Um, and we can be that for ourselves sometimes too. And we have to be that for our families and our organizations and our clients right now, because this has turned into a marathon with a lot of great opportunities in it as well. So how do we get from goal getting to goal setting? Well, one of the things we talk about with people and Denise mentioned it, nobody cares more about your success, whatever that means for you in your life than you do. Well, that means we can't outsource that totally to somebody else. We have to be intentional about it. We have to own it. We have to be able to envision it and work forward towards it. So we, we call that you know, setting the vision, changing our current reality to the vision to the, the way we want it to be. We have to be intentional when we do that and that's why we're giving you these tools. Um, I often talk with women and men that say to me, I don't know if I can. I don't know if that's ever happened. I can't have that conversation now because it's not the right time in the cycle of my organization, whether it's review time or budget time or salary time, or my clients only like to talk to me when it's time to renew our contracts. Well, I say pshaw to that. We can break through that in so many effective ways that serve us and others well. Denise talked about that we often hear about jobs that were created. I can share with you a story when someone said, came to me and said, I really want to work at this company. It would be so important to me. My parents were affiliated with this company years ago. They've served our community well. They, my values align with that company. And when I asked what was stopping them, it had nothing to do with their skills. They had the skills. It had nothing to do with timing because I knew the organization needed that kind of skill. But what it had was that what he said to me in this case, it was a gentleman, 
was, well, I don't think they have that role. And that's what Denise said. So I'll just give you another example. What we brainstormed on was, well, maybe they should. So he went to them and proposed the role. And in his case, he was able to say, I will work for 90 days for free to show you the value that I can bring to this organization. And if I do that, I would like to come on board. And if I do that, I'd like to even be reimbursed for the 90 days I worked. So he asked for something very bold and it worked out. 12 years later, I just heard from that gentleman and again, he said, Robin, we need to do it again. I ran my course at that organization. I need to go find something else and it's a challenging time. While there's a war on talent going out on right now, us could work from anywhere right now because of technology. Firms are hesitant toward the end of the year to be thinking about uh, putting in new positions, about making changes. And many of them are looking forward to questioning what are our economics gonna look like for the next 18 months? How we're very focused on raising capital as we all are in our organizations. We are looking forward to finding lean, lean Six Sigma and efficiency and being effective for ourselves, our clients, our families and our organizations. But that doesn't mean that our career is in timeout. Our career is not in timeout right now. If anything, it's an exciting time, as Denise said, to create what I'm looking forward to. What next client am I determined to get? What next job am I determined to get? What next skill am I determined to build? So we suggest that you use the framework as one of your tools that Denise laid out for you. And here, she gave us a different goal, a, diff a different goal to go after. And this one we're using is to be recognized as an industry expert, to be a subject matter expertise person. So why does that matter? It matters because being narrow and deep in something and being recognized for it is a door opener for you. It makes you a go-to person. And some of you and Denise have heard me say this many times, that's the highest praise that I can ever earn. If I am the go-to person for my, for my four millennial children, wow, that's a home run for me. Because for many years, I was the stupidest person on the planet playing the role of mom to that group. So if I can be a go-to person for my family, for my friends, for my peers, for my colleagues, for my clients, everything happens good after that. But I have to earn the go-to. So how do I get that? Well, many of us have all we need right inside of us. We just need to let it out. And there's some expression that my Iowa farm girl friend here will tell me about peach basket and letting your light out or something. But it just means in an appropriate way, in my style, in my words, without being too braggadocious or bold for me, how do I let the world what I can do to make a difference? And we break it into these three buckets. So if that's my goal, to be recognized as an expert in as large a pond as you want that to be, we need to deliver on three initial bit buckets, three initial peach facets. And one of them is performance and the second one is image and the third is exposure. I especially like that the PI acronym fits very nicely with the Thanksgiving theme that we have right now, because Denise and I are grateful for the opportunity to be with you today and with all the women that we get to visit with in our, our the roles that we play in the community. The performance piece is very important early in your career. The performance piece is bringing the goods and bring your A game because I won't be considered trustworthy, effective, dependable, or qualified for what's next if I don't perform in my current role. Whatever that role is, working with my clients, working in the community, working in an organization, I have to bring 110% to that role. At the same time, I need to be looking forward to my next role. I need to be building skills that I can transfer for the next role. And that's very, very motivating to me. When I'm not in that role and I get to watch for a while, I call it stealth mentoring. They don't even know I'm watching them. But I watch people all the time from what I call leadership moments. I watch Denise when she does something exemplary. I watch television and watch great leaders do things exemplary. I take copious notes when I see someone crash and burn from a success or a development standpoint. I watch them do it poorly and I make a vow to myself that I will never do it that way. And I've grown right then. 
by watching that. So I will get whatever I can from people around me as to how I can do my job better. Denise mentioned that if you understand the greater organization that you're in or you volunteer in or you lead or you work in, you will be better at your current job because you understand better now what's coming before me and what's going after. Years ago, I worked with an organization in Chicago and I was asked to find efficiencies. And I spent some time just getting to know everybody. I literally just walked around the halls back when we had halls to walk around. I didn't have a mask on at the time. And, uh, and, and I would have if I needed to. But I walked around and I met the most interesting woman. And she told me she had been there for 34 years. And what I'll never forget about this woman, this was over 20 years ago, this conversation, was how proud and enthusiastic she was about her work. She took going to work as a privilege every day. She made it that she made a difference for the greater good of this organization, which was insurance, woo, which I used to be in. And I can tell you that insurance is the underpinning of the economic free world. So there's nothing boring about insurance in my mind. And there was nothing boring about insurance in her mind. But here's what I learned that day. When I asked her, what happens after you do your work? She didn't know. She didn't know where her work went. She knew who it went to, but she didn't have line of sight to what happened next and what happened after that and what happened after that. And what did the clients say when they were considering the, the proposal? If she had known those things, she could have done her job differently. In three weeks, I found several things only because I had that high view of things that she could do better that made her job easier created capacity and made a better product. So performance comes in all shapes and sizes, whether we're looking to move right or left or up or down in our careers. So performance is the first piece of how I become an industry expert. You cannot be a generalist in my mind until you're very good at something and then you build from that. So that's the way I look at it. And here on this chart, we give you some different words. And these are a bit corporate -y. I apologize for that. But they're all transferable to whatever you're trying to get better at. The image piece used to be dressed for success. I am old enough to have owned Brooks Brothers suits. I don't know if any of you were. A Brooks Brothers suit was as, about as boxy as a piece of cloth you could put on a woman. And it had a bow tie. And the, 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 knee, the uh, skirt came down to about mid-calf because you wouldn't want to show any calf or knee. Um, and I either had a, a turtleneck on or a button down that was choking me on underneath it. That was an image thing because we were trying to fit in. Fitting in is important when you want to make a difference. But fitting in so that you're not even seen is not anything that makes any difference anymore in the world we fortunately live in. But your image, how you show up every day, has much more to do with what you're wearing. In another session, Denise and I could talk about that, that kind of image because there is still something to that. But what I'm talking about is what do people see when they see you coming? Do they see someone that's going to make you let them feel good when you walk away? Or do they see someone that they want to duck into the ladies room and hide even if they're a guy, they just got to get out of the way? Do they see someone that's going to drain them or give fill their cup up? Do they see someone that's got their back or someone that's gonna pile on work with absolutely no understanding of what they're asking you to do. The other side of the image coin is, what's my personal brand? What do I show up as? What do I represent? Am I dependable? Am I honest? Am I trustworthy? Will I say, I don't know, but I can find out for you? Do I have a language that's growing with where I'm going in the firm? Do I have insights that are growing with where I want to go with my customer base or with my colleagues? Am I able to be comfortable in a room? Do I have a voice in the room or do I sit in a meeting and say nothing for a very long time? You probably don't belong in that meeting if that's going on over and over again. Am I able to have a conversation with people and not look like I'm going to pass out? These are all skills we can build over time to make us relatable to people and they add to our image. How do I respond to failure? How do I respond to trouble? How am I responding through this pandemic? 
because having energy and motivating ourselves and others is one of the greatest images we can have right now because people will say, I want more of that. I want to be around that person. We call it charisma in a way, but not charisma like we find John F. Kennedy or other great leaders in the world, Mother Teresa, Mahatma Gandhi. Charisma for me in a working world is how do people feel when they walk away from me? Sometimes they do run away from me, I'll be honest. But when they walk away from a conversation with me, how do they feel? That's me growing as a leader. That's me motivating other people. The last piece of this pie is exposure. I, if I am fabulous and nobody knows it, that's not going to advance me or my career or my business or my clients or my family or those people I care and love about. But I have to expose myself in appropriate ways. I want you to know that I wholeheartedly believe that self-advocacy is a team sport. If I've helped others and they know my skills, as Denise said earlier, if somebody knows what my sweet spot client is, of course I'll be front of mind if they when they remember that, when they meet someone that needs those kind of skills. How can I expose myself and my work? And how can I have others doing that with and for me once I've earned it? And that's what exposure is all about. If we are, even for an introvert, and this will shock you, I test introvert because my motivation comes from fear of failing others. I'm exhausted after a day like today, but I energize up and I do it again tomorrow because I get such joy out of it too. But making yourself visible, literally we used to say walk the halls, be seen, you can do that with Zoom. This is a fantastic time to expand your network with 15 minute virtual coffees, asking people if you can learn what role they play and how they got there. Reaching out to people you haven't talked to in a long time might need your call today. And all of that turns into friends work, helping friends, and that exposure in your organization and beyond. Even taking this webinar today and saying, this might be interesting to you. Why don't we talk about it afterwards? That gives you exposure to people that you can help and they can help you. So again, if I hide under a rock, even if I'm fabulous and people don't know it, that's not gonna help. So that goal for me of being a subject matter expert has been one I've worked on my whole career. So I am somewhat of a knowledgeable person on several things, not just one, but I've had to go out and remember leaders are readers. So I've tried to read as much as I possibly can when I can. And now that might mean a podcast or a webinar like this, or just flipping through pages of a book or listening to it. So I try to do that. What's interesting, and I'll wrap this slide up with is that I told you that early on performance is the most important thing in our career. It establishes, it establishes our reputation, a reputation that we can manage our whole careers and our whole lives. As time goes on, research shows that performance becomes less important and image exposure become much more important. And it's not because you can slack off on the performance piece but hopefully it's because you know what you're doing, you, you understand your role and your job, you've developed an expertise and others are around you to help you do that because you've even learned how to delegate. But again, if you don't show up as that person and people don't know you're that person, therefore all the performance in the world won't count. So over time, exposure actually becomes 60% of the importance pie of advocating for yourself and your success. So I wanna give you three quick snowmen tools as I call them on the next page, please, Denise. And the first one is just what I laid out for you and Denise gave you the framework. Have a vision, get one, bake it, make one up. Just throw a dart at the board and say, if I could do something cool, this would be it. Denise said she wanted to travel internationally and within a year or two, she was in Australia working with amazing organizations to make something happen. She's right, if you say it out loud, there's an 80% higher chance it will happen. It's a phenomena because when you say it out loud, others are on your team to help make it happen. So have the vision as we talked about in the framework we just gave you to design your future. Start the blueprint, figure out what your strengths, your weaknesses are and the opportunities are and then where are the walls you're gonna have to go up, over, under or around. 
put that blueprint together, even if you have to change it next week, write it down. The 10 wealthiest women, I happen to be in wealth management. I help women put their hardworking money to work for themselves. The 10 wealthiest women in the world, interestingly, seven of them were self-made, not inherited. And nine of them said, I wrote down my goals. So write this down and put the blueprint together. And then as they say at Nike, just go do it. So that's the first snowman I want you to pin on your virtual bulletin board. The second snowman is a really important one because it creates capacity. Start, stop, continue. I do this every day that I look at my to-do list, which could choke a horse. But I look at the to-do list and I say, what don't I really have to do today? What can I push to tomorrow? What do I want to always do? I want to continue doing this in my organization. I want this process to continue because it's effective. I want to keep working towards this because it's still my goal. That's my continue bucket. The important bucket is also the start and the stop. What should I be doing differently? What should I start doing differently because I made that blueprint yesterday? The one that's hard to do is the stop one. I can move things to tomorrow, but I have a very hard time saying we're not gonna do that anymore. And it's the most important one individually and for organizations. Because when we stop doing something for good reason, it's obsolete, uh, we don't have enough users, our clients aren't asking for it anymore, it, it's duplicative of work we're already doing somewhere else. When I stop doing something, I have created capacity to do more exciting and interesting things. I have created capacity to be better at something else when I stop doing this. It's a really important one to think about. The third one is what makes us strategic and a critical thinker. Women are often accused of not being strategic. Again, Pasha, we are strategic every day. Something goes differently than we expect and we have to rework the whole, the whole day. We do it all day long. Yet we don't come off as strategic sometimes in our thinking, in our approach, and sometimes in our language. So the language I'm gonna give you is the third snowman today. What, so what, now what? The what is, what's the information I have? What's the data I have? What's the problem I'm facing? What's the opportunity I've thrown myself in front of? The what is whatever, but whatever it is, why does it matter? I don't know the statistic, but there are like a bazillion things that hit our face every day. They are either verbal, they are cognitive, they are visual, they are sensory. They're, they're all those things. We filter them through, but we don't do something with every single one of them. We don't even recognize some of them. They come at us so fast and furiously. But when you figured out what's interesting to you, you then need to go and say, why is it interesting and why is it important? It will motivate you to do something else. Everything can't be fail safe level one. Everything isn't important to us or organizations, but putting time and reflection time into figuring out what is important is hugely strategic. But here's the most strategic secret. When you do something with that, when you execute, when you move to now what, you're changing the world because you're making something better or different that's gonna make you more efficient, you more successful, your organization have more bandwidth. It's going to make something better for your client. Those are strategically thinking thoughts. Get to the now what? How do I get to the now what? So some tactical ways to get there on the very next page. Let data be your friend. You know, a lot of us are nervous about data and numbers. As Denise said, get yourself familiar with the numbers that matter, whether it's in finance or process or in inputs and outputs, whatever the numbers are in your business, if it's number of visits to a client, whatever that is. But let that be your friend in the sense of use it to motivate what you need to do next. Use it to reach for that big goal. Use it and turn data into information for people. Data is overwhelming, but when I translate into, here's the so what about that, everybody learns and we all move forward. Don't fall in love or lust. 
You know, lust is a short-term thing. It's great. It's good for your heart, your mind, and your soul. Love is as well. But we have to be disciplined in deciding what are the few goals we're going to have and work on and let go of the others for a while. What's the important data we're going to use and when are we going to use, when are we going to know that it's not serving us well anymore? What process do we have and when are we going to know that it's not serving us any well anymore so we can stop it? We can't hang on to things forever. The third one is to get outside perspectives. If you're trying to figure out what your next goal is or how to achieve your goal or what you or how to achieve a goal that you've set for yourself, ask others, what do you see me doing well? This is your, this is, this is your sounding board. Get yourself a personal board of advisors or a personal board of directors. Pull those people together that'll be your truth sayers, not just your yes friends. They're important. I love my yes friends. They say yes exactly when I need them to say, oh yes, Robin, you're wonderful. Oh yes, you can do that. But I need people that are truth sayers to say to me, you know what you're really good at? And you know what you could be better at? Get that from other people. And that will help you craft the future that you're trying to design. Lastly, get people that will challenge your thinking. We call these loyal dissonance because they're your friends, they're your colleagues, you're all really in it for the same thing. You have the same values, you have the same uh, aspirations, but give people permission to say, I don't think that's gonna fly. Or you're not very good at that. You'd have to work really hard to achieve that. Are you ready to? Okay, I'll help you. But have people be loyal dissidents. There's a tool that we love, but that's called the five or seven hats. And it gives people permission. We need to give Edward de Bono credit for this because he was one of the first that used this tool. But you and your organizations may have different iterations of this. But it gives people permission to play different roles while you're brainstorming about your future, the future of your organization, the future of a client project. Ask someone to play a different role, even one they've never played before, because they'll bring seven different perspectives or five different perspectives to the conversation, which makes you critically thinking much better than you've ever done before. So here, for example, the white hat would be the data guru. Make sure you've got lots of real data that's actually accurate, not just off the internet. Do your homework, do your research, get real data, make this person almost exhaust you with data so that you can pick the most important data that you wanna to take to the so what and now what stage. The red hat is make sure we're thinking about people, make sure that we're being inclusive, make sure that we're thinking about our clients, make sure we allow people to be emotional at times because emotion is important, especially during times of change. Bring in somebody that's an optimist, bring in somebody that's a pessimist, bring in somebody that's gonna tell you we can't do it so you can say, yes, we can. And this is just a great way to brainstorm in a much more holistic and impactful way than we've ever done sitting at ourselves with a pen and paper trying to figure things out. We need the help of others to be better. The blue hat is the person that says, let's not spend three years thinking about this. To Denise's uh, example before, that gal could have spent two years ruminating about, I sure hope they know, I, they know I want that job. I sure hope I'm qualified for that job. I sure know how, how, and hope I have the support to get that job. Well, that, you know, that great things don't come to those who wait. Great things come to those that go out and get six other hats to help them think through or create the job like Denise said, or even raise the balloon that says, I aspire to be. Because I can tell you that as a manager of many, many wonderful people over the years, too many times people came up to me and said, how come I didn't get that job? And too many times I had to say, I didn't even know you wanted it. You never asked, you never sent me up a balloon. So, or, or you never asked to wear a different hat to show me that you can grow into that role. So that's imp important about this. And there's so many different ways. So I'll wrap up with, thank you for, for letting me on my soapbox here about something I am so passionate about. Without a roadmap, we won't move forward. Without reflection time, we won't figure out where we're going. Without the help of others that are honest, we won't be able to get excited and create that what I or what I want others to look forward to. 
you know, Denise does something called happies and crappies at her dinner table every night. I hope that was okay that I shared that. We, we do highlights and lowlights with my virtual family out there now. And it's just a way to motivate people to remember there's so much good that is still going on and that we have a lot we can create out of this extraordinary time that we're going through. So we hope that you'll take some of these nuggets with you. We'd love to open it up to questions and answers on anything we've mentioned here or anything at all that Denise and I may have wandered through in our careers. We'd be happy to answer those questions for you. So please use the chat and uh, we will monitor that and, and throw your questions out because if you have that question, we hope somebody else does too. Thanks so much. So Robin, we had a great question in the chat. And so Kristen, do you wanna share that out loud and we can talk about it? I, uh, let me see if I can um, open that up to you. Can you unmute and ask that question aloud? Yeah, I think I'm unmuted. Can you? Yes. Can you okay? Perfect. Hi. Hi. Um, so one of the things that I struggle with is, um, you know, having the tools and having gone through the exercises and knowing what I need to do, um, but still not implementing. And it's not really procrastination, although I suppose that would be a decent way to you know, describe it, but it's, um, I just can't like motivate myself <laughs> to actually do what I know I should, should, or what I have mapped out that I need to do, if that makes sense. I have a couple of ideas, but Denise, why don't you jump in and then I'll pop in behind you. Yeah, Kristen, thank you, Robin. Kristen, the first, one of the first things I think about is you say like, you know, it's not really procrastination, but it is. <laughs> right. Um, and, and there's something about like when, when you design it, there's, there's something that is not, it's not bold enough. It's not exciting enough. It's not worth it to move forward. So there's something about it that is not something to look forward to. It's almost like the fear or the lack of positive expectancy that we talked about um, that you're, you're feeling like you might be setting yourself up for failure. So you don't, you know, so you have to, you have to just reflect on it. I'm, I'm kind of guessing, but some reflection about, so what is it about this goal that keeps you from taking that first step? And do you need an accountability partner? Do you need encouragement? Do you, what, what is it that's happening to get you um, to that first step? It sounds like almost a first step. And that's, let me just say one more thing and then Robin, I'm passing it to you. But one, one of the things is that's not unusual at all. We see that all the time about, I want to, I intend to, and I just can't get myself there for one reason or another. Um, it, it requires a pause and some reflection on what exactly is it that's keeping us from taking the first step. Sometimes it's, I just really don't know where to go or I've convinced myself it's too hard to take the next step. And, and I'll just put it into a, a reality. I, I might say to Robin, like, I just can't get myself going. And Robin gives me this just great, simple, you know, Denise, let me help you. Um, I, let me introduce you to somebody who can help you. And suddenly I've taken that first step. So sometimes it just takes a little nudge from the right person who's encouraging and supportive. So Robin, what about you? Yeah, not much to add there. I, I think uh, sometimes I have to flip it around and say, if I do, do this, what are the consequences, even if it's with a small C, and that would be, I'm going to, I'm going to regret if I don't get this done, I'm just going to be languishing here, and it's going to be every day, I'm going to say, and I, I feel almost like um, failure is absolutely the wrong word, but I will feel like I'm letting myself down if I don't either dismiss this one, maybe I don't really want to do it, and as Denise said, there's a different version I do want to do, or maybe I'm trying to do something that somebody else suggested that I need to do, or somebody else has whatever it is, but if, if so, I either dismiss it, but if I don't dismiss it, it must be important to me and I have to raise that importance up. And sometimes just with, as you do with when you're trying to do some effective continuous improvement or change management, you show your fellow colleagues and, and partners, if we don't do this, here's what we're missing out on, or here's the opportunity missed, or here's where, where we're gonna be behind again next year, whatever that is in our own personal, Remember, we're kind of, we got to look at ourselves as our own little organizations and, you know, I am my own organization, so I should have a, 
I should have a vision. I should have a marketing plan. I should have, a, uh, I should have advisors that help me do things I'm not great at. I should treat myself the way we treat other things and just do the pluses and minuses on this one. If it's a confidence issue you're having, Kristen, that's something that starts right here. Um, and there's lots of great articles and books and lots of things that sometimes just remind us, or Denise mentioned her at a girl card. She was, she's gonna show my, she's my bad of white today. She's gonna show the audio visual. Yeah. So, this so, is yeah, so thank you, Robin. Like look at, so see these bright cards. These are my at a girl cards in my wallet and they go with me. Let's see, it goes that way. Can you see that? And then look on the, you, you can't probably read it because it's a lot of small print, but do you see how it's written on? So I don't get the glare, but, but what that is, is, um, you know, these are stories, projects that I've worked on that, that, you know, if I, it, if I put myself back in that moment, uh, it was hard, it was intense, it was exhausting. And, and as Robin said, you know, it can be overwhelming. Um, and, and the stories on these cards today are how successful things went. And it, and it, again, it, it's very braggadocious if I were to speak any of these out loud and that's not me, I, I can't do that. But in my head, I need to remind myself um, that I've done harder things before, that I've um, accomplished bigger things, that I've confronted more difficult things than potentially by comparison what I'm confronting in the moment. So that's that my Atta girls are just terrific. Um, I have these on the visor of my car um, so that when I drive and pull up to a building and I start getting that voice of self-doubt in my head that the stories that I need to remember to give me confidence that I've pushed away bubble back up intentionally. And it, it truly is a tool that serves me very well. And the, the last one I would say, cause and I, I'm sure you have these tools, Kristen, but if it, we are all living in this keep up, hurry up, always on world, my great fear is that work from home, WFH is turning into work forever hours because we're just on all the time again now. Um, but if you need to create capacity so that you have some time to make, to do these first couple steps and get your momentum on this, then stop doing something else or give it to someone else to do, or, you know, like, you know, that's why they invented Instacart. Most of us are reluctant to use it because we think we have to do this because our reward includes this and all of those things. But, um, and, I, and I'm not trying to be um, flippant here. I'm just trying to say that we can create capacity in a day, in a week, in a month, if we're willing to stop things that are not having the impact, or as I call them, invisible errands, that they only get noticed when somebody else needs it. But if it's for me, I can just stop some of those things. I can create capacity in my day-to-day -day life to prioritize these things. But it, it is, is none of it's easy. We know that. Um, also, again, you can go to the chat if you have questions for us. And um, Robin and my email are on the bottom of this slide as well. So um, if it's a question that you have that you're struggling with and either one of us can help you um, and you're just happy, you know, like, like Kristen says, sometimes it's just hard to get started. Um, but I, I wholeheartedly, and, and friends make such a difference here, but I wholeheartedly suggest, you know, get together with a group of friends and, and just, um, you know, work through it together, challenge each other, um, you know, just, start, take that blank piece of paper and just start. Um, I realized that I wasn't able, um, we have that strategic plan framework in a worksheet for you. And uh, so I'm gonna send it to Brandy so that Brandy can send it out to you. Um, I realized that I don't have the ability to post it um, just in my, whatever my um, administrative level here is on uh, this webinar, but we have it for you. And um, again, you can reach out to us directly and we'll, we'll send it as well. But it, it's that framework that you saw on that slide that would um, help you uh, spend some time to design um, whatever you want to design as your future. So Brandy, if we don't have any other questions, we'll turn it over to you for a wrap up and, and what's next. Great, thank you so much, Denise and Robin. And um, thank you for everyone that joined us. As I mentioned at the start, we did record this webinar and we'll post it on our YouTube channel. And um, I will also send out the worksheet from Denise uh, 
later today once I receive it. And hopefully you all will feel free to join us on December 2nd for the next session, Grow Through What You Go Through with Denise and Robin. And you can register for that through our Eventbrite page as well. So thank you so much and hope everyone has a great day.